So, yes, apparently you got teleported here. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding, doesn't matter. So, yes, here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to talk about the desolation. Ugh, God, desolation of Smaug. If you guys want to know, count out, count how many times I say des des desolation wrong in the video. So, alright, so here we go. Desolation of Smaug. We start off in a flashback with... I don't. I didn't really think that this flashback was needed, you know, mainly because what was the point of it? You know, we didn't really need a flashback of anything because I'm just walking around here, guys, because I need to check the time. But um, I didn't really think we needed a flashback because what's the point of a flashback about something we already know? Because I believe it was them um talking about, you know, the key and stuff, and that they need a burglar, and then Bilbo appears, sticking his head out of these trees, you know, and then, you know, because they're watching out for these orcs, I didn't really care for that beginning scene, but I can just pick that, you know, I can just, it doesn't matter, I can, you don't, you don't need to watch it, but I watch it anyways, because it's not that long, but, and then, and then you also get to see a Peter Jackson cameo, which is pretty cool, the director of all six of these monstrosity of films. Not saying monstrosity is bad, I'm just saying these huge mega films. Like, I'm pretty sure, if you watch these movies in order, you're gonna be sitting on your couch for about a couple days. Well, a full day, approximately. I would do that, but uh, that would not work. <laughs> so, yeah. But if you can, props to you guys. I respect you as a person. You are a very cool person. If you can sit through these movies, and not get up at all. You can't move at all. I challenge someone. If you guys can do that. You have to watch all six movies. As soon as it comes out. You have to watch them all in order. And you can't even get off your couch at all. Do it. I'm challenging one of you out there. Who watches this video. Alright. So enough freaking out on you guys. So. um, Yes. The Desolation of Smaug. Now. You know, we use, like I said, I kind of said what happened at the beginning. The one, you know, that I'm going to kind of walk through the movie like how I did last time. I didn't really care for it when, you know, Bilbo was going through that daze. Because I believe that was what happened next. Is they started, Bilbo, they, they went through this forest and then they were getting all, you know, Bilbo was getting all crazy and he saw doubles of himself, you know. And then they get captured by spiders. Now the spiders, the Mirkwood spiders are really cool. Oh! Forgot something. I forgot Boar. Because I believe Boar happens before them. I believe Boar happens before spiders. I believe. Either that doesn't matter. But the Boar... Okay. I'm, I know I'm saying this guy... I think I'm saying this Baron or something. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong in the, wrong in the comment section below. Because I know if I mess something up, people are going to hate me for it. But... The guy who can change into a bear, I really did like that character. He's kind of cool, but he wasn't in it for long. You know, he was just there to give him shelter for a little while while they were hiding from the orcs. So I believe that happens before the Mercury Spiders, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. Yeah, it does happen before the Mercury Spiders. And so, yeah, that happens. And then, you know, it was kind of cool to see that sort of happen, but I didn't really, you know, it wasn't, you, you didn't really get to care about this character. Like, they had introduced him in the last movie instead of taking so long in the last movie and introducing a new villain. You know, then it would have been different. But then Gandalf goes on his own adventure. And then ha Bilbo, Thorne, and the rest of the dwarves go through these through this forest that gets them all dizzy and stuff. And then Bilbo plays with the birdies or butterflies or whatever or those things are. And then they get captured by the Mirkwood Spiders. And Bilbo saves them all. And he goes a little crazy about the ring when a spider about gets the ring. And he's like, no! And he just kills that thing repeatedly. And he knows. And I'm pretty sure he knows he's going to go crazy. He's going crazy. And then we go on the side mission with Gandalf and Radagast the Brown. Oh, and that's another thing I did not talk about in the last video was Radagast the Brown. Now, Radagast the Brown was, I didn't, you know, I kind of liked him in the last movie. But, he, you know, I've heard some people are like, this guy is so freaking stupid. He's just he's just a meth head. And I'm like, okay, I don't care. He's, he's not terrible. He's not like Jar Jar Binks or anything. And so, yeah, but I do think he did a better job in this movie. But then he kind of, he kind of is scared. And then, no, I think, no, Gandalf goes into the temple alone and then he runs off. 
And I was like, really? You just left him to go in there alone? But then, you know, Gandalf was like, you know, I think he said stay here or something like that. And then Gandalf fights the Necromancer, and then he meets Sauron. So then I'm, I just went through that whole scene there, and it happens over the course of a couple, you know, scenes and everything. And that's the end of Gandalf for the movie. You know, he can see the eye of Sauron through this Necromancer guy. And I'm really looking forward to that fight with Galadriel, because I've heard she's going to kick that guy's butt to And so, then we meet the Mirkwood Elves after the Elves save um, the rest of them, the dwarves from the spiders, you know. You know, he helps them get out of there, and then we meet Legolas again. And Legolas is a really cool character. And then we meet Terandriel, I believe her name is. And that's kind of a Legolas love interest, kind of, but, you know, not really. They're kind of like a brother and sister team, I think. And then, um, she falls for a dwarf, the dwarf falls for her, you know, and that kind of, the romance kind of goes throughout, you know, and you'll see that at the end of the movie, and it was okay, I didn't really care for it, I guess, but I heard it's kind of bad in the next movie, in Battle of Five Armies, but then we meet the Mirkwood Elves, I believe. But I really did like Lee Pace's character. I thought he was very fantastic. I really did like that. Where he's, I really did like his character. I thought his character was really cool. And so, yeah, just wanted to say that. And he did a good job as Ron the Accuser, by the way. And so I think he did, you know, a good job in this role because he's kind of a villain, but kind of not a villain. So, yeah. Sort of like that. But then the dwarves get out and they go on this roller coaster ride thing of a bob. And then Thrandriel goes after the dwarves. And then, you know, Legolas comes back and helps. And then Legolas goes after her. And they end up in Lake Town. The dwarves end up in Lake Town and are saved by Bard the Bowman. And as, and as Thorin says, Are you sure? No, wait. I can't remember that line. I'll do that after the review, but, so, that, that's just gonna bug me during the whole review now, but, uh, and then we get to Lake Town, and then we meet his family, and then Bard gives them refuge, you know, and Bard is a nice person, I think, he, Luke Evans is a cool actor to play this role, even though I didn't really get that far in the book, but, um, I did like that kind of role, and then he finds out Thorn is him, and I'm like, well, if Thorn Oakenshield, huh, I think I've heard of that name before. Duh, he's the king of the mountain. Duh. So then the dwarves head to the king of the mountain with Bilbo. New moon, with the the uh, the moon comes out. They enter the key. They get to go in the lonely mountain. And then the best role of all in this movie. Benedict Cumberbatch, Doctor Strange. Yeah. So we got to see Doc. You know, we got to see Benedict Cumberbatch as Smog, and Smog is huge. And the coins, you know, the gold and everything, that was, oh my god, there was a lot of gold that he could sleep in. And so, then they find the, Thorn finds the, oh, no, Bilbo finds the Arkenst Arkenstone. Yeah, but he doesn't get it, and then the dwarves take after him. And it's a, I did like that whole kind of fight thing where they, because, like, hey, they would know this place. Because I felt like, if they didn't come up with a good plan to get it, to stop him... You know, that's kind of, that's kind of defeats the purpose of, like, they, they've been in this for, you know, they were in this mountain for who knows how long, they don't even know what everything is. But they did a really good job. I, the gold statue kind of melting and getting all over him looked a little cartoonish. But other than that, the ending, oh my god. This is, in my opinion, a love-to-hate ending. I hated this ending, but I felt like it was the perfect ending because it was, like, a real good cliffhanger. It really got you, like, <gasps> Um, Peter Jackson. Just kidding, but it's just like one of those things where Smog is like, "I am fire," and then Bill was just like, "What have we done?" Oh, misty island on the mountain, call wherever the song goes. I don't know how it goes, but yeah, I did like. I kind of, you know, it's just that. Uh, but yes, I am really looking forward to the Battle of Five Armies. It's going to be the first mo Oh, I'll explain that later, though. But, see ya, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. And Jay Wink is wicking out!